Lacquered Coffins, World War II Air Combat Rules by T. Jensen. So this is a set of relatively fast playing Second World War Air Combat Rules that I really enjoy. Um, they have the, it, it, it allows you to play anything from fights with uh, only a handful of models per side up to larger scale uh, dogfights. It, it doesn't, um, it, uh, the game is played on a, you play with single aircraft at a time. So unlike games like Bag the Hum where you're, you're flying entire wings, uh, you're controlling individual aircraft. So the game will handle bigger dogfights, um, uh, large like, bomber interceptions. Uh, if you have a bit more time, you could absolutely do that. But personally, I think the game shines when you're controlling between 6 and 12 uh, aircraft per side. I think that's when, when the game shines. So there's uh, just to get this out of the way, there's some stats in here for the RAF, for Germany, the Soviet Union, USA, Japan, and the uh, Italian Air Force. There are also rules in the very back of the book, which provide you with information on how to create your own stats for aircraft. If, if there are aircraft that aren't provided that you want to, to play with, then there's rules in here for how to create those stats and how to point the aircraft so that you can play uh, using the point system that's that's provided. Um, so the, the game is, uh, you can play scenarios, you can invent your own scenarios. There are some, some basic kind of match scenarios that are provided. Um, the game, as I mentioned, does use a point system uh, for the aircraft so that you can play balanced games and, and some aircraft have different special rules and they, the ability to carry bombs and rockets, etc., which will, you know, add, uh, add um, increase or decrease the points. So you can play some nice uh, matched games, but as I said, you can do scenarios. There's rules in here as well for attacking uh, ground targets, uh, attacking naval targets, and there's AA fire and all that sort of things covered. So it really does cover everything. There's stats for fighters, for bombers, fighter bombers, night fighters, uh, pretty much anything you can think of. Uh, it's all covered in this relatively thin volume. The only criticism I have is that there isn't a quick reference, which is a bit of a shame. Because although there are there isn't a lot to remember when it comes to combat modifiers and, and pilot skill checks, sometimes I do find myself having to flip through pages trying to remember where the the uh, pilot check uh, list is. So I know what maneuvers require a pilot check and what maneuvers don't, what maneuvers I can attack um, with and what maneuvers I can't, etc. But it's only a minor niggle. As I said, there isn't actually a lot to remember. Um, in terms of combat modifiers, the combat modifier table you could probably remember after a, a couple of games. Um, and overall, I, I definitely think it's a strong rule set. Uh, the, uh, he has written a set of uh, Cold War or modern um, jet air combat rules as well, which I have yet to pick up. But based on my experience playing this, I'm definitely interested in that. It'd be interesting to see how he uh, modified these rules to cover uh, things like missiles and much sort of beyond visual range uh, air engagements. But back to the World War II rules, I'll give you a brief description of how the game actually plays. Uh, so essentially, you'll have your aircraft, you, you will have yours, your opponent will have theirs. You, you typically deploy on opposing ends of the table. And then you'll see here the aircraft have got two dice. So I am using blue dice to represent altitude and black to represent speed. So what this means is this Spitfire is at altitude two, which is actually relatively low. Uh, one is the lowest you can go. Six is uh, six is normally the highest, but some aircraft can go higher. Um, but a D6 is normally uh, all, all you need to measure that. Um, so what would happen is if it was my turn and I was going to activate the Spitfire, his speed is currently four. So I would move him forwards eight inches. So you move for double um, the number of inches as there are pips shown on the speed dice. So he would move forward eight inches in a straight line and then I would get to do his voluntary activation. So every aircraft does a mandatory activation, which is the straightforward move, double their speed, and then you get to do a voluntary activation. And that's where using a uh, standard uh, protractor, which is another thing I like about this game, there's no um, awkward templates to cut out or use, you don't need to use hexes. Um, you can then do a voluntary maneuver. So that could be to turn, it could be to go uh, just increase your speed or decrease your speed so you can climb and dive. For example, if I wanted to climb, then I could reduce my speed dice by one and uh, climb by one. Some aircraft, like the Spitfire, allow you to actually uh, go up uh, two, two speed uh, or two altitude um, by one speed. I think I've got that right. I might have gotten that rule wrong, but essentially there are special rules for the different aircraft that allow them to do different things. Um, 
So you can do that. So I can I can change his altitude. You can combine maneuvers as well. So you can do an altitude change and a turn. So if I wanted to line my forward fixed forward firing guns up with the uh, Messerschmitt over there, then I would need to turn because your your models fire in a straight line um, from the center of the base. And if that line touches an enemy base or crosses it, then you can fire at them. So if he was like this, he wouldn't be able to hit that Messerschmitt. So what I would do is I've increased my altitude to match his because it's a lot easier to hit someone when you're at the same altitude as them. And then I can combine that maneuver with a turn. Now, because I'm combining the maneuver, I may need to take a pilot skill check um, and that lets you do different things. But overall, that is that is basically the game. Once I finished activating this aircraft, I would go and activate uh, my next one and so on. And then after I finished activating my aircraft, my opponent would do the same with theirs. And the game moves at a very nice quick pace. Now, because you have that mandatory movement action at the start of every turn, it does mean that you do have to think about uh, future turns. There's a nice element of forward planning there and trying to predict what your opponent is going to do. Because yes, you can just turn and shoot all in the same part as part of the same action. Next turn, uh, this measure Smith might have set his speed a bit higher so he could fly right past me. And then he might decide to do something like an Immelman where he's able to just turn around like this. And I have set my speed perhaps to a three, so I'll be moving up to here. And then maybe I there's another aircraft over here which is coming in to attack me. So I've kind of got myself in a bit of a position now where there's not a lot I can do. Um, so there is an element of forward planning. It doesn't require you to write down orders or anything, which I really like. And the game provides a nice, uh, like I say, it's, it's, it's fast, it's fun. I've enjoyed playing it. Um, I've played it a number of times now. I'm currently building a second set of aircraft for fighting Pacific battles. So I have a, a nice, um, nice relatively large collection of Japanese aircraft, which I'm currently working on. And I'm looking forward to doing some uh, naval, uh, naval um, attack uh, scenarios with the game. So definitely recommend it if you're looking at uh, uh, picking up a nice, fun World War II set of air combat rules. If there's any World War II rules that you enjoy for air combat, then let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to find out about new rule sets, uh, especially if they're ones that I've not really um, not really heard about before. I, I, I'm a big fan of collecting rules and reading different rules. So if you've got any suggestions for other World War II air combat rules, then uh, leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.